Welcome back to Short Scale Modeling. This is part 9 of the AMT Star Trek Next Generation USS Enterprise NCC-1701C. In part 9, I'm going to be um, lighting up the nacelles and attaching them to the main hull. If I get time, I shall also attach the saucer section. So let's go on with this. So to begin with, I'm attaching the bottom part of the nacelle to the strut. And placing the wires through the hole that I made earlier and then I'm gluing the actual cavity or the recess point that the um, strut goes into, not the actual strut itself. That way I'm making sure that most of the glue is not going to be spread onto the wires. Now it, it will need a bit of force to put it all the way down to its location point. It's just at the top of the ridge where the pins are that hold the nacelle uh, in place. Try and make sure you get it right down uh, to that base. So once both of them are on, I'm just uh, checking the length of the strip that I need. And it's going to be um, 6. Now I can push it to 9, but it's going to be a bit crammed. So I'm going to do 6 and add some LEDs in, uh, for the end uh, side. So one end will have an LED and the other end will have an LED. So these are the lights I'm preparing to put in initially. There is another two LEDs going to go in. Um, these are blue ones, but I'm putting them in near the end. So I haven't got them out yet. So um, there's a left and right to this uh, because of the location lights. Now, initially I put in the, um, the sweet wrapper, the red and green sweet wrapper. Uh, because I wasn't going to have them flashing. I'm just going to have them as a static light. So I'm just going to put white in. So I thought, no, tell you what, I'm going to have them flashing. I like them flashing. However, I did actually run out of red uh, LED flashing lights. So it's not a problem. So I'm leaving in the um, red um, sweet wrapper and I'm going to put in a white LED uh, flashing LED and that will still flash red on the other side So I'm just preparing the LED now this, um, It's a standard uh, Ruska go resistor going on to it then I'll just attach it with a bit of solder So as you can see there I've got it on my um, little helping hands here and um, Just a little bit of solder uh, along the areas where I've made contact with the wire so the red wire and of course from the resistor onto the LED. You don't need a lot here, just a little bit. The wire's getting in the way slightly. So I'll move the wire, just a little bit of solder on each uh, contact point uh, to secure it. And then it's uh, a sheaf to go over uh, the uh, connections, particularly for the uh, resistor. You don't want to really damage the resistor, hence why the sheaf, as well as uh, preventing uh, the positive and negative touch and bare metal of course and I just use my solder iron to uh, shrink down the, the sheath um, there's various ways you can do it but your solder uh, iron is perfectly capable of uh, producing enough heat to shrink this down and then at the end of the wires um, it's a simple case of stripping back the sheath to expose the wire for the next connection to be made remember if you're going to do it how I do it I don't recommend it as in stripping the wire, you could uh, cut yourself. So uh, just be careful when you, you're doing it. I do it like this because um, I've done it for years like this, but I have cut my finger open many, many times doing it. So uh, don't do it. So this is uh, the light test for it, and you can see where it's going to go. Um, just uh, there, and it's flashing. But when I flip it around, you'll see it flashing red. So once that's there, I'm just going to add a little bit of super glue uh, to attach it. Now, be careful that you don't put the glue on the actual bulb itself, because that will distort the colour. And, and in some cases, depending on how strong your glue is, it may actually stop the LED from working. So um, only put it on the metal or uh, plastic parts. So I'm doing the same again with the green, but the green is a pre-wired LED, so I don't have to wire that one up. So it's just a simple case of placing it in uh, with a little bit of super glue. So the two of them in, I'm just going to do a light test to make sure they are, they are still working. Um, remember, I keep on saying, 
every time you do something different uh, to an LED, change it, uh, test it, because you want to make sure it's still got power flowing to it. And the same with the green one, just a, a light test. Now, these are not going to flash and sync to each other. That's one of the drawbacks about my basic system that I do. If you want them to sync, you're going to have to put in a, a board. By that I mean a circuit board. So next then, um, like the inner part of the um, hull, I'm cutting out two strips of plastic art to uh, hold the uh, LED strips. Now you don't necessarily have to do this, but um, I think it's better to have a more stable platform to put inside. For some reason, the backing paper didn't want to come off the lights. I was in danger. I actually had thrown a uh, tear off the wiring for the lights. So um, it's easier than just to put a little bit of super glue on your plastic card, as you can see there, and I'm having difficulty taking the backing paper off again. So after several tries, I just left it on and uh, placed the strip onto the card. So this is to uh, place a bit of solder on each contact point. So I put the soldering flops on first. That actually stops it from burning the contact points. And just placing a little dome of silver on each contact point. So there's six in total. So now I'm taking a piece of plasticine. And this is to block out the light from the flashing LED. Um, especially the uh, green one. So what I'm doing is um, I'm putting a little bit of super glue around the LED, not actually on the LED, but I'm putting it on the actual wire and sheaf as well. And I'm simply taking the plasticine and patting it down over the entire thing. Um, there's other ways to light block. Uh, you can use clay. Plasticine can damage plastic after a time, so just be aware of that. But I, I found that it, but, um, if I use super glue to put it down as a, as a film, a coating so that um, it doesn't damage the plastic. I've not had a problem so far with it but you never know. So anyway, um, that's on. I'm just going to add a little bit more each time we do it and that will eventually block up the light. And it's the same with the white one because um, even though it's white um, it's flashing so you don't want that flash to interfere with the glowing aspect of your warp missile. So I'll just block it out. So a power test as always, just to make sure that everything's running and of course that the light is getting blocked out. So we just plug it in. And you can see no flashes are coming from the actual LED itself. I'm now placing in the strip again, just using a bit of super glue. Again, you can use other glues, hot glue works very well on this as well. I think it's a little bit more messy than super glue, but it is um, your personal preference. So just a uh, random dots of super glue uh, around the bottom, then placing uh, the strip. Take note though of your positive and negative. Um, you don't want to be crossing wires over uh, to the other side when you can easily have it uh, facing the one side. And once it's all settled down and the glue is dried, it's time to solder in uh, the wire. So um, I'm using the middle points here. Just connect the positive and negative. Uh, be careful, I'm using my fingers, but um, I recommend you use a pair of tweezers or even clamp it so it's easier to move it in position. Um, you could burn your fingers here doing this, so don't do it uh, like I'm doing it. If you, want, if you don't want burnt fingers, use a pair of tweezers. It is safer. Now that the positive is in, it's time to do the negative in, in the same way. Just adding a little bit of solder to the iron it makes it easier, easier to get a good connection. So once again, a light test and um, everything is working fine. Uh, it's good to put in your next clear part as well, see how that's going to look. Now, um, it is a bit harsh on lights, but there is ways to dampen it down. Now, of course, you can use a uh, blue strip LED lights they are available. You can get them mostly red, blue, green, white, um, the RBG colours. Um, but I just happen to use white because that's what I had in hand. And uh, I'll, I'll show you how to dull down the harshness of the white anyway. So also test fit your parts at this stage as well so that you know exactly where all the lights are going to be going. 
So to them, down down the hash of the way, what I've got is uh, my old sweet wrapper trick again. And I'm just uh, putting a bit of canopy glue around the edge of the buzzard uh, cover here. And just lay it flat down, um, glue side obviously. And um, once it's all dry, we'll just, I'll just trim off the excess. And another thing you can do to uh, dull down the colour uh, of the white is um, you can paint the actual um, LED part of the strip light. So I'm using clear blue here and I'm just putting a, a dab of clear blue onto each actual light. Um, depending how thick you put it is, depending how uh, dampened down the sharpness or the harshness of the colour. Of course you can use um, warm white uh, as well, so there's many different options out there to use. But if this is all you've got at hand, you can't actually paint these LEDs. So just try, and there you can see it turning to blue, and the, the glow is a lot softer now than it was before. You still will get uh, the uh, points showing through or, or on the plastic, uh, you can see there, but it's less harsh. And I really like that effect. To me, it sort of it looks like the uh, nacelles pulsing. But that's just my personal opinion. A lot of people don't like it, but I do. So now the buzzer uh, dried, it's time to cut off the plastic. I'm just using my knife to get all off the excess. Then I'll just trim around it uh, once it's all off. Uh, I'd say this is a good way uh, to do it. This is also good as well. If you want the buzzer to be grey, then when they're off, so they're not showing red. Um, this is a, a good way to get them to light up red without having to paint the buzzard. Um, sometimes you have to put in a couple of layers to get the, the red that you want, um, but it really does work. And if you want to dull the actual buzzard, just cover it in a, a sprayed lacquer, and that should dull it. It's not a sprayed la clear lacquer you get for cars. And that will actually dull the plastic to a foggy condition. So when you, the lights are off, it will look like it's dead. But as soon as you turn it on, it will bright up to a red colour. So I have two pre-wired white LEDs. So I'm just tinning the ends before I make the connections. I then take in them and solder them to the back end of the cell um, for each point. And the reason for that is it just gives me a little bit more runway on the light and a little bit of manoeuvrability uh, on the light as well before I place the um, side walls and the top of the cell on. Next is to wire up two blue LEDs. Now these are for the back. Um, sometimes uh, if you're putting a minimum amount of strip lighting in, uh, the light may not reach the front or the back. Um, in this particular case, um, it doesn't quite reach the back as, hot, as much as I want it. So I'm putting in 5mm LEDs, but I've also underpowered them. Um, I'm using the same resistor I've used for a 3 LED, a 3mm LED. Um, still works, it's just um, less power going through them so they don't shine as bright. So they wired up exactly like the other LEDs. Um, I'm just uh, putting the, the sheet for now, just shrinking it down. And once I know the rough position of them, uh, it's time to solder them in. And these are getting connected to the middle uh, contact points on the light strip. These are the um, contact points that's actually running the um, whole power to the actual strip from here. And once they're all in, it's uh, a little power test to make sure they're all working. So as you can see there, they're slightly duller than the um, three mils you can put in. You can see how bright the other one is because it's running on a, off a different resistor. But I did actually want lesser glow so I didn't have to try and uh, light block it or something so like that. I wanted them to be a feel close proximity to the strip LED. So now that's in it's time to actually join the two themselves together. So these are getting connected uh, via the uh, flashing LED uh, to the front part of the uh, light strip. And once they're joined, it's uh, time to make uh, another power test to make sure everything's working. And there we go, everything is on. 
now the, all the lines are in, it's time to assemble. So first of all, I'm putting uh, the buzzard in, and um, the buzzard cover, I should say, and it's just a canopy blue again, and the buzzard just uh, pushes into uh, the uh, little rim of the nacelle. It fits really well. And for the side walls, it's same again with the canopy glue. Just running a bit, a bit of this glue all the way around the rim. The location points make it quite easy to fit this. I just put it into each uh, location point, and the whole side wall should fit in without any problems. When you're putting the second one in, just be aware there is a joining to be made at the back that butts up against each other. So you may want to put a little bit of canopy glue on that section. Um, don't use normal glue because if it does come apart or it's not a tight fit, um, the canopy glue will act as a clear window which then can be painted blue. So I'm using normal cement here on the actual plastic part uh, of the nacelle. As you can see I've already uh, placed the uh, first one on. Um, after I've, I've placed the normal cement on I'm putting a bit of canopy glue around the edges of the uh, nacelle where the uh, plast clear plastic part is going to be. It's quite easy to line it up, just get it in the basic uh, position then if you line up the front part first and click that into place then you'll be able to um, just use a, a steady and clamp to start with to hold the bottom before putting it under a little bit of a heavy clamp uh, for for the front of the nacelle. The, you can open up the location points if you wish uh, so you don't have to do this um, but I, I felt it was better to put it under a heavier clamp just to make sure it is going to close and of course uh, same with the uh, bottom part then I was able to remove the actual um, holding clamp at the back, the little red one. So it's a lighting test again to make sure everything's fine and you can see it all glowing there nicely. Well I'll bring this uh, video to a close now, looks like I didn't have time uh, to add this sort of section so I'll do that on the next update as well as probably start putting on the decals as well but I'll see how I'll get on. So in the meantime why don't you check out the other videos uh, for this build or indeed uh, the other uh, rest of the videos on the channel. Hit that subscribe button and uh, throw me a like and of course add any comments. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.